Hey guys, in this video we're going to do a quick review on pointers and then we're going to talk about passing by reference. So here in int main I've got a couple of integers declared, a and b equals 1 and 2 respectively. And then here I've got a, an integer pointer, so this is the type here. And then by putting the asterisk here we're declaring this to be a pointer. And so uh, in C++ pointers always have to be to some type. So this could be a double, this could be a string, this could be a float, or it could even be like a struct that you've created. Um, and you would just put the name of your struct right here, and that would declare this pointer of that type. And then everything after this, I'm, I'm using PTR, uh, so pointer alpha, and that's just to help us remember that this is a pointer, and it's often done like this for a convention, this, so, you, so that anyone reading our code can tell this is a pointer, and there's a couple different ways to do it. Uh, but this could be anything. This doesn't have to be PTR. That's not part of the command or anything. And then we're setting it equal to, and then this ampersand here gives us the address of something. So this gives us the address of A. You might have also seen this done on two different lines, and if you did, it would look it would look like this. So here we've declared the pointer, and we haven't set it to anything to equal anything. And then here we're setting it equal, and you just the pointer equal to the address of A. And so what is actually saved under pointer alpha is the address of A. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and well, let me go ahead and undo that, and then I'm going to go ahead and build and run this real quick so you can see the A and B do print out 1 and 2, and I'll leave this printed out the entire time. And then also want to print out here uh, pointer alpha so that we can see uh, we would expect this to return an address. And then over here, we're using the, uh, the asterisk to dereference this. So it should return the value that this, is pointing, this pointer is pointing to. So we would expect this to return 1. And let's go ahead and build and run this. And yeah, it looks like it works. We've got this hex hexadecimal address here, and then we've got one printing out here. So we can see that that works. Everything's good so far. Now, a couple ways to pass by reference. Um, one is, is simply doing what I have here, and we'll get into these swap number functions. I'm going to go ahead and uncomment these, but we're going to get into those in a second. Is that here I've called swap numbers, and then I want to make sure that I can change this A. And so if I simply pass in A, what I'm doing is I'm passing by value. And so it's gonna make a copy of the value of A. And so it's gonna set whatever I have inside the swap numbers function. So it'd be right here. So obviously this is declared a pointer. What we'd have to do is just declare a regular integer. And it would, it would set this pointer alpha equal to one. But if we changed this or did anything to it, it wouldn't actually change this A. And that's really what we want to be able to do, because that's going to that's going to allow us to do a lot more in C++. So what we can do is, if we've declared a pointer up here, is that we can just pass in the address of A and do that here. And hopefully you remember, I think we talked about it maybe in one of the other videos, but essentially what you're doing with a function whenever you have a declaration like this is you're setting it equal to whatever you point in. Or I'm sorry, whatever you pass in. Um, and in this case, uh, you can see this looks exactly like what we had when we declared our pointer. Int pointer alpha equals at the address of A. And that's exactly what we have here. Int pointer alpha equals, and then we're passing in the address of A. And so uh, what I've done with these two swap functions is just change the values of A and B. So that's all I've done. So let's go ahead, and you can see I did the same thing with B here. Let's go ahead and look down at our function, our swap numbers function. And we can see that was just my pre-declaration. So here we've got the same thing. Um, and we're declaring pointer alpha, pointer bravo. And note that I've called this something different, or I've called this the same thing, but it's actually a different variable because the original pointer alpha is now out of scope. And I'll explain more about that in a second. So we've created a temp integer, and then we've used our dereferencer here to access the value that's stored uh, where pointer alpha is pointing to, which is A, which is that one here. And so we set this temp equal to one, and then we're saying, okay, set the value that pointer alpha is pointing to equal to the value that pointer bravo is pointing to. And then we set pointer, uh, pointer bravo, the value that pointer bravo is pointing to equal to our temp variable, which was originally A. So all we've done here is swap these numbers. And so if this works correctly, I'm gonna go ahead and build and run this. We would expect this to, instead of printing out one and two, it should print out two and one. Let's go ahead and do that. And great, looks like it worked. So that's awesome. So, so far we're doing pretty good. And then we're gonna go ahead and, and do this again. Uh, now I'm gonna show you with, with doing it this other way. Now here, I'm passing in pointer alpha and pointer bravo. And, and remember that what is actually saved here, as we saw 
as we saw with this printout statement, I'll build and run this again, is that pointer alpha is actually storing the address of A. And uh, let me just prove that to you one more time, so make sure you, you can believe me. Uh, I will print out here the address of A, and we should see that this prints out the same thing. Yeah, and we see all of this is exactly the same. Um, this box here is just sublime telling us these are, the, these are the same things. So we can see that what's stored at pointer alpha is equal to the address of A here. And so uh, so we can what we're doing here is we're really passing the same thing. We're saying this int pointer alpha, this, then this is a new pointer alpha, is equal to pointer alpha, which what is stored here is the address of A. So that's what's going on. And uh, again, we can build and run that and it works just fine. So uh, let's go ahead and now use our swap again function. So we're just going to call this again. And all we're doing is swapping them back. So we have, if you look right here, all of that syntax is exactly the same as right here. So we would expect now that we're calling this twice and then we're printing out, it's the only thing we're printing out right now is up here A and B, is that this would now print out one and two again. And cool, it seemed to work. So that's great. So this is how you can continually pass into a function and have one function call from another function is just like this. Just make sure you're passing in the address of something and then what you're declaring up here is the pointer. And all of and what you're doing here is you're actually creating multiple pointers that all point to the same address. And just to prove that, I'm going to go ahead and uncomment this out. Uh, here we can see that we're printing out pointer alpha. And down here, we're also printing out pointer alpha. But these are two different pointer alphas. So one is inside the swap numbers function, and one is inside the swap again function. And then for both of them, we're printing out the address. So here we see at the address of pointer alpha. And here, the at, it's pointing out it's printing out the address of this second pointer alpha. So let's go ahead and build and run this. And we can see, remember the first thing we're printing out here is the uh, is what pointer alpha is storing, which is the original address of A. And we can see that these two are indeed exactly the same. Now, if we look down here, we see that we're printing out the, the address of this pointer alpha, and it's different than the other address of this pointer alpha. So these are actually two different locations in memory that this pointer alpha is being stored at. And again, this pointer alpha up here is actually a third location. So they're all just referencing the same location in memory, and that's an important distinction to note. So I think that's it for this video. Uh, we'll move on from here and get a little bit more complicated in our next one. See you there.